Fields up, Ironbreakers. We're on here coming at you with another video, and welcome to another episode of Core Gameplay. Now, this is the series where I show you guys a nice chunk of gameplay from a video game, and I tell you guys how I feel about that particular video game, as well as what are some of the mechanics that you guys can expect from that game. Now, in today's video, we're going to be featuring Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I know before a lot of you guys talk about it, I know that you guys are probably wondering, what about spoilers, Rukan? You're going to spoil my experience, man, like Nintendo did with their latest Nintendo Direct? And the answer is no. You will not be experiencing any spoilers at all. The only thing you guys will be seeing is, I think, three different uh, locations in the game, as well as a couple of combat sequences just to illustrate what the game looks like when you are playing it. The characters and blades featured in this video are not have not only already been revealed but were the some of the first things that were revealed in the game so if you've seen any trailer at all to xenoblade chronicles you will have seen these characters and i purposefully refrain from using any of the rare blades so that you guys can still experience the sense of wonder and discovery that you will have whenever you encounter a rare blade so just leave, leaving you guys completely comfortable about that stuff no spoilers will take place in this video so what is xenoblade chronicles all about and i'm talking about xenoblade chronicles as a franchise now because some of you guys might not be aware what xenoblade chronicles is like and you're wondering if maybe xenoblade chronicles 2 is a good jumping point and the good thing about xenoblade chronicles is that each of the titles has its own individual story so essentially, any of the titles can be considered a good entry point. Naturally, some of the title, uh, one of the titles is a little bit more dated, namely the original Xenoblade Chronicles. Even though, despite the fact that it is a more dated title, I still feel it is a very solid entry in the franchise, and it holds up even today. At least this is again my opinion. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X also a pretty good title, and Xenoblade Chronicles Two follows through with that now the structure of xenoblade chronicles is essentially an open world jrpg which can be somewhat confusing to a lot of people because you know jrpgs usually don't tend to be open world they tend to be a little bit more linear but uh in, in my opinion the cool thing about xenoblade chronicles is that it has its own unique play style and if you've played a previous xenoblade chronicles title you kind of know what you are getting now, having said that, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 feels rather different from both of the previous entries because it feels more story-driven than both of them, which is interesting because a lot of people thought that, like, you know, original Xenoblade Chronicles was more story-driven, whereas Xenoblade Chronicles X was more driven towards exploration. Therefore, that's why it's got an X in the title, and good God, did I love Xenoblade Chronicles X. But... In my opinion, I feel that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is more story-driven than even the original Xenoblade Chronicles. I might be repeating myself a little bit there, but this is like my 100th take, so bear with me. Um, so what I mean by that is that you will have, um, you will experience more story before the game kind of unleashes you onto the world. And even after unleashing you onto the world, you will be constantly experiencing the development of the story if you want to actually advance and explore new titans because if you weren't aware uh, very much like the original xenoblade chronicles where you are on the backs of two giant titans the bionis and the mechanis in this one you will be on the, on the backs of multiple titans there are several titans and they're all navigating something that is called the cloud sea and in order to unlock each of these new titans for you to explore and go have adventures in you will have to constantly advance the storyline. So the whole world is not going to be open to you from the start like it was, for instance, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, where pretty much uh, after you get to New LA, they were just like, well, the whole world is open. You can do whatever the hell you want. So um, in my opinion, so far, the story for this game has been really, really great. I don't really like ranking stories like saying, oh, this one was better than Xenoblade Chronicles or Xenoblade Chronicles X. I kind of feel that each of these games tells its own narrative what i want to say is that i've been really enjoying the narrative in xenoblade chronicles 2 it has already had like i've mentioned in my previous video it's already had cinematics that have taken me near tears and managed to instantly afterwards put a smile on my face so it manages to have a very serious side to it while at the same time maintaining quite a bit of humor with some of the characters that it introduces in the game maintaining somewhat of a balance uh so that it's not all about 
the doom and gloom. It's also about enjoying the story and having an adventure. And that is something that I've really been enjoying. And I've, and I've actually had to stop myself from playing it because I'm like 20 hours in at this point. And I had to stop because I want to play this game with you guys. I want to live stream it on Twitch. And um, I don't want to play through the whole thing all over again. So 20 hours in, this is my stopping point. And probably by the time this video goes live, I will most likely be streaming this on Twitch right now. Unless there is something in the embargo that I wasn't made aware of. But um, anyway, in the story of this game, you're going to be playing as Rex. So unlike Xenoblade Chronicles X, where you could actually create your character, in this one, you have a set character that you are going to be playing as. Uh, does this mean that you can't control the characters? No, you can still change the um, you can still change the character who's in control of the party. So if for some reason you would rather play as any of the other characters that you meet throughout your experience, that is um, completely possible. Just bear in mind that through it all, Rex will always be the main character. Now, an interesting thing about Rex is that Rex's profession is he's a scavenger, and I kind of think that this is um, this works really well with the nature of JRPGs and the nature of just RPGs in general, how you tend to play them, because you always want to pick up as many items as possible and you want to get all the loot that you can possibly get. And I feel that Rex being a scavenger character actually works really well within that nature. Like, you're going to be able to do things like, you're going to be able to dive into the Cloud Sea and actually bring back treasures at certain points in the game. And in those different points, as you dive, you're going to be encountering different materials. You'll also be able to collect these materials from certain points and from chests and from other things that you will find throughout the world. These materials you'll be able to sell in order to get uh, currency or you will be able to use them to create something which is called auxiliary cores. Well, not really create them. You'll be able to use them to activate the auxiliary cores that you find. And auxiliary cores will be a way to upgrade your blades. I'll be talking about blades a little bit further down the line. So even though this is uh, a much more story-driven game, uh, there are still some really cool locations for you to explore. I mean, you guys can probably see what the locations look like in the gameplay here. I will only be showing three locations to show the very bare minimum so that you guys can still experience everything fresh. Uh, some of these locations will have a couple of Metroidvania aspects that I thought were also very interesting because in Xenoblade Chronicles X, you could actually explore by simply jumping your way through a lot of the world because they give your character like this super jump. You can just jump really high. In Xenoblade Chronicles 2, that is not the case. Your character's jump is fairly normal. However, in order for you to explore certain locations, you will need to have either certain blades with you or certain characters with you, which will lend you specific skills that will enable you to activate certain conditions, and those will trigger you being able to navigate to other locations on the map. Like an example of this is I once found this uh, swirling air thing, and what, when I clicked on it, due to the fact that I had a certain character with me and a certain blade with me, it basically triggered this animation that made you do a super jump and allowed me to explore uh, a different section of the map. There are still heart-to-hearts, like all the other Xenoblade Chronicle titles. Uh, the heart-to-hearts on this one at least seem to be a little bit more streamlined, and thank God for that, because previously you would have to develop relationships to certain levels, and I don't know if that is going to be the case later down the line, but so far I think I've been pretty much able to see all of the heart-to-hearts that I've encountered throughout the world, which was a big... Uh, a big point for me that was somewhat frustrating uh, in the previous titles. Uh, another thing that I feel Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 does better than its predecessors is the tutorial. It manages to introduce mechanics at a much steadier pace than previous titles. Because like the previous titles is almost like, oh, here's all these mechanics, now figure it out. You know, like a lot of JRPGs tend to, tend to front load their mechanics and you just got... Here you go, here's all the things that you need to know, now figure out how to use, well not really figure out, but they would explain all of the things to you in like huge sheets of information. And it would be very hard for you to actually follow what the hell was going on. This one introduces the mechanics at a much slower pace, which in a way feels somewhat limiting uh, if you are already familiar with the combat system in Xenoblade Chronicles. But for a new player, I think it is going to be a much better experience because they're, they're not going to get overwhelmed with all the different mechanics like break and topple and launch, which is a new uh, thing that you can do here. And um, th those, are, those are pretty cool. I'm going to be talking more about the combat further ahead as well. Now, as you are exploring the world of um, the, the universe, the world, 
the Titans. I, I don't even know what to call it. But as you're going to be exploring uh, the world of All Rest, um, you will encounter uh, several chests and several jump points, like I mentioned, as well. There's more to it than that. There's also like things where you'll be able to dive underwater, all depending on the skills that you have. Again, Metroidvania aspects. But uh, on top of that, you will also encounter, obviously, monsters. Now, uh, the way monsters work in Xenoblade Chronicles, essentially, they will have set levels. So the monsters don't scale with you. There will be a specific level. So when you are exploring a new area, that adds a degree of danger to it because if you're exploring a really high level area, you'll have to be really careful about not angering monsters because they will literally one shot you. As a matter of fact, they, they, they always do this. And it seems in all Xenoblade games, they always have around the starting area. They will have like a really high level monster. At least they did it in Xenoblade Chronicles X and they do it in this one as well. You're like level one or level five or something when you get there and there will be like a level 81 monster, which is aggressive. And if you happen to pass by close and will just come up to you and kill you it's a little bit of a troll thing and i think that's that's cool you know uh so looking at the visuals here in my opinion uh the art style is fantastic as a matter of fact the visuals overall the art direction everything in the game looks great except for the resolution i mean you do have to take into account the switch's hardware and all that so resolution is not going to be particularly impressive what you guys are watching on youtube is probably what it's going to look like or it's going to be very close to what it's going to look like on your tv so just letting you guys know ahead of time don't expect like ultra hd or something of course it's it's the switch but ultimately i don't think that is something that is going to distract you from the gameplay experience of this game at least it didn't do it for me i really enjoy playing the game and very rarely do I look at a game and like, oh man, this could actually look a lot better in a different resolution. You guys might be wondering, what is it like to play it on uh, on the go? Does it is it too different from the TV? And I didn't see any massive differences, so it played just as fine on the TV as it played on the go. Uh, as a matter of fact, you guys can see through the engine, you will rarely see any slow ups uh, in this engine at all. It is running uh, 30 FPS, of course, because you know the Switch is limited when you are showing. Uh, worlds as big as the worlds in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 but again it doesn't detract from the gameplay at least in my opinion uh, in terms of animations the animations are also pretty good throughout the combat especially when you pull off some of the cooler looking combos which I will get into uh, combat a little bit further on just be patient um, and uh, the animations are pretty good but what really will surprise you is what this game manages to do in cutscenes because it's almost like the way the game looks when you are fighting and when you are doing combat and just like overall exploring the world, you get a sense of what the engine can do. And when you see the things that they do in cutscenes, it is going to blow your mind. At least it definitely blew mine. And in the very first real long cutscene that I got after a battle, I was completely blown away is all I can say about that. And, and since then, there have been other cutscenes that have really surprised me in the way that they kind of work out. And the effects that they use in those cutscenes, it, it's just really, really well made. Again, personal opinion. Now, in terms of sound, the sound overall itself uh, feels pretty solid and um, no real issues there. The sound feels great. Uh, however, what is a standout feature is the soundtrack. Good God. The, I, I always liked soundtrack in Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X had a couple of tracks that would be hit and miss. It would have some really good tracks. Then it would have some tracks like sometimes the the music where you would be back in New LA like doom, 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 doom. That would almost be so out of place for that game, but it still worked. But this one so far, I haven't seen the, sound, the soundtrack skip a beat. Like there hasn't been a single moment that I wasn't like, oh my God, the soundtrack feels fantastic. The soundtrack feels really appropriate. There hasn't been a single fight where I haven't really almost wanted to pump up the volume on the television to just like really blast it and it's it's just really good the soundtrack in this game is really good so now let's talk about the gameplay itself obviously there will be cutscenes as you play through the game to tell you the story and all that uh, when you're not in the cutscene you're essentially exploring the world collecting treasures like i've mentioned previously through the metroidvania aspects and uh even using the whole scavenger thing where you will dive into the sea of clouds to bring stuff up and also you will be engaging in combat now the combat in this game 
uh, is a large improvement on the previous Xenoblade Chronicles entries because of how they work. They worked almost like an MMO where you would use the D-pad to cycle through your skills and then you would press A to trigger each of the skills. So it's, it's almost like you had a skill bar, like an MMO skill bar, and you would navigate through it and then press a button to select the skill that you would be doing. This time it is going to be very different. The way it's going to work is you'll be able to swap between blades using the D-pad and uh, depending on the, play that, the blade that you have equipped, you will be able to do three attacks and a special. The special will level up as you do the fight. And uh, as you go through the different fights in the game, the, the, level, the, the level of your specials will differ. And with that, it will differ the special attack that you will do. Now, um, the way this works is... Your specials will level up as you do other blade arts. And you you will always have four arts to pick from, but you can only have three of those arts equipped. To basically give you a little bit of a choice as to how you want to play the game, but it is somewhat of a limited choice in terms of how many arts you will have per blade. Each blade is going to have a role. You will have either an attack blade, which as the name implies, will be a DPS blade for you to deal damage. You will have a tanking blade, which will be blades specifically for the purpose of you uh, tanking um, the monsters for, from, for, for your allies so that they can deal damage. And a healer blade, which is main purpose, is going to be to heal uh, your party. Uh, your party is always going to be composed of three or less. Sometimes it will be less because of story constraints or something like that. But the maximum number of party members that you can have in this one is going to be three. So ideally, you will want to have a healer, a tank, and a damage dealer, but you are not limited by these constraints. You want to try and go with three damage dealers, go for it. Because certain blades will be like damage dealers, but they will still be able to perform certain healing things. Same thing for tanking blades that will still be able to perform damaging things. So there is a variety in there, and that's where the blades kind of come in. Now, on top of the arts that you get from each different blade, you will also have something called blade combos. Now, these usually work based on elemental types, so you will have certain combos that you can do. Like, for instance, Fire, fire, fire. That's a combo. So whenever you do a fire special, you can then follow up with another fire special and follow that up with another fire special and you will do just like this mega explosion, this level three combo. And those blade combos are very satisfying to pull off. Uh, but it's not just fire, fire, fire or whatever. You will have different combos. And the important thing is you are usually not able to pull a blade combo by yourself. So even though Rex has the legendary blade Pyra, it's not like he's always going to be able to just like, oh, I'm just going to do three fire combos because the, um, there's a timer in which you have to do the combo. So what you usually have to do is you have to work together with your other team members to set off a combo. So you, whenever you start a combo with a blade, which is basically doing a special attack with your blade, the game will tell you, okay, here are the different paths that you can take through this combo. It is presented in a very unintrusive way on the top right hand corner. And it will tell you, okay, now you can do, you've done fire, now you can do uh, another fire combo, or you've done rock, so now you can do rock and fire. Rock and fire will trigger volcano, and after that you can do wind, and it will basically spread the volcanic eruption. And it's, it, it's, it's complicated, but it's very satisfying to pull off, and it adds a layer of complexity to the combat, which starts fairly simple. And again, you can usually play through the game without necessarily mastering these combos but it feels much more satisfying if you do master them because if you don't master these combos essentially what's gonna what's gonna happen is you're still gonna be able to get through the game but you're gonna take longer getting through the game because the fights will become longer because you're not using the combos appropriately which is why it is somewhat important for you to learn those now some people might be asking can you play the game solo and in my opinion and, and uh, solo i mean as rex being the only party member and in my opinion, that's not really a good way to play a Xenoblade Chronicles game because you always want to like trigger blade combos and do stuff like that because that's going to be much more satisfying than actually just playing that character. So the answer is yes, you can, but why would you? You know, and also there's banter going on between the characters that kind of adds to the whole experience. So, you know, in my opinion, play the game with the characters. It's a lot more fun than playing solo. So yeah, the combat is more accessible a little bit more streamlined. Uh, the uh, controls particularly is like the best thing, uh, the best evolution from the previous styles because instead of selecting skills using the D-pad, everything is mapped to the faceplate buttons, the blade that you're selecting and the different arts that they can do. And it feels much more satisfying. Now this time around, you cannot move 
when you are auto attacking. This is important uh, because you need auto attacks in order to uh, generate, I don't know what you want to call it, but to generate, to make your arts be accessible, you need to do auto attacks. And um, this basically means that you will have to position yourself strategically. And the blades will be supporting you the whole time, so you'll also have to position yourself in a way that you're not blocking off the blade. So if you start suddenly in the middle of a fight, you start running away, you're going to actually lose combat effectiveness because your blade is not going to be able to support you. Uh, so yeah, there's more complexity to the combat, but at the same time, it is more accessible, which is kind of weird to say that, but it, it feels great, is what I can tell you. Uh, so now let's talk about blades, I guess. And blades is one of the things that is probably one of the biggest new features in uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Because blades are actual characters, which is something that I was curious about when I first saw the whole blades thing. I was thinking, okay, so this blade is basically a weapon, and this weapon has a personality. So I'm assuming this is a personality that only the drivers will be able to see. So I, I, initially I thought that the blade was something that only Rex would be able to see, and then other drivers would, would be able to see their own blades. But no, the blades actually manifest physically in the world. There's in-game explanation for that. I'm not going to delve too deep into that. I'll let you guys explain that, um, see that and explore that through the story. Uh, and naturally, due to the fact that you can discover blades throughout the world, just like RPG gear, uh, there's going to be blades that are more important and blades that are less important. So there will be blades that take a more active part in participating in the narrative. And then there's going to be blades that are just there because they're blades. And you will instantly be able to tell which is which because very much in the same way that whenever you're watching an anime you can instantly tell which one is the main character this is going to happen whenever you find a rare blade you'll be like yep this is a rare blade this this blade it's going to look very different from regular common blades so the different types of blades will have different elements as well as different roles like i said tanking healing attacking and they might also be different weapons like usually hammers will be tanking Sometimes you'll find a damage axe. Uh, you'll also see healers. Um, there, there's a web, there's a blade that's like a ball that the character kind of kicks it around. I think that's kind of cool too. So there's a wide variety of weapons and a wide variety of blades. And depending on the blades that you equip on yourself and on your party, you will be able to assign roles to each of them. So in all essence, you can be a tank if you want to, which is something that I was talking about. Although, to be honest, after playing through the game, I kind of don't want to be a tank because I always want to play with Pyra, and Pyra is an attack blade. Uh, so, yeah, there's that to it. Uh, but yeah, you'll have different roles that you'll be able to assign to each of your characters, um, and those roles will vary depending on the blade that you assign to them. It's also interesting to see how the blades interact with the world because some of these blades, again, the, the rarer blades will actually have specific roles and they play a very integral part to the story particularly pyra naturally uh and it's pretty cool to see how they react to the world and how everything kind of comes together uh on top of that there's uh, another mechanic that i haven't gone into all that much which is towns level up uh, as you play through the game you'll be able to like buy specific items from a town and as you buy items as you basically do commerce in that town as you complete quests for that town that town will level up and that will mean that it will have further things available for you to do so if you're like a completionist you are going to spend a lot of hours min maxing each of the towns and doing side quests and stuff like that um so yeah that is pretty cool and i know that this has been a pretty lengthy video uh, longer than the videos that i tend to do nowadays hopefully this gave you um a good idea of how i personally feel about xenoblade chronicles which is i wholeheartedly recommend this game to anyone who feels they might be interested in this gameplay. If you've played a, a previous Xenoblade title and you've enjoyed it, you will most likely enjoy this one. Just bear in mind, it is very different from Xenoblade Chronicles X. It also feels very different from the original Xenoblade Chronicles. And in my opinion, that is a good thing because it manages to craft its own spot in the market. As a matter of fact, in a lot of ways, I almost wish it was even more different. It was even a greater evolution, you know? But because a lot of things still feel familiar and I wanted to have a completely new experience naturally you can already see that the art style is very different the world and the universe is very different but like the gameplay itself the gameplay loops and the things that you will go through will feel familiar in terms of mechanics if you've played one of these games thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one